I don't know if you noticed, but all of the major or all of the desktops in Linux that I know of don't have telemetry on by default. That's very weird, almost as if in the Linux world every, everyone cares about privacy and this sort of stuff, you know. So when you actually build something in the Linux world, it won't have telemetry out of the box in theory, or at least it's open source and you can take it off. That's the theory. And as far as I know, that's also the practice for all of the Linux desktops. So this also comes with an however, however, for whoever actually designs those desktops, because Sure, you do care about the privacy of your users, but that also means that when you design something, you are not able in any way to actually know what they want, what they use their settings like, what they use the desktop like. You don't know anything about your users. And sure, you can go to forums and ask people that um, happening for sure. I myself go to the KDE forum a lot to check what people think of KDE Plasma. However, that's a very skewed uh, perception. It's not statistically accurate, obviously. So something that I saw a lot is the major uh, desktops in Linux actually trying to understand their use ba user base better. And that's very natural. And I think it's very interesting how different desktops approach this, uh, trying to be as um, you know, uh, respecting of the user's privacy as possible, because obviously that's a common goal for everyone involved. So let's start off with elementary. And elementary did uh, last year something very interesting, and I even did uh, a post about that to actually get people in, a UI study, which was actually like a form that you could go and uh, compile. And I compiled it, I made my girlfriend compile it. And based on that, they actually tried to understand some, uh, some aspect of how their users use computers in general and uh, regardless of the desktop, um, if I understood that correctly. And uh, that was actually very interesting. And of course, they also published the results publicly, so we can actually go through them and uh, with all of the questions and their stats. And it is stuff like, how often do you click tap an app in an app launcher to open your frequently used apps versus, I don't know, the dock or uh, the search in your system, this kind of stuff. And that was rather interesting. Of course, you still have a, have a very strong um, uh, bias in your selection because uh, people who actually participate in these studies are not representative of your users. Probably the users that want to keep the default are those who don't care about much about this kind of thing. So they're probably underrepresented. If you do this kind of studies, probably you're overrepresenting whoever customizes their desktops as an example. But nonetheless, this is interesting. However, there's only so much that you can actually ask in a Google form as an example. And uh, S stuff like, I don't know, what is your um, system version or how often do you open this application uh, or what extension do you use in GNOME? That's not very going to be very <laughs> easy to actually measure for you. There's this an uh, other survey, which is still a survey, which was rather interesting. And this one also focused a lot on what extensions to the GNOME shell were used. This is uh, older, 2017. And one of the results, as an example, is that Dash, Dash to Doc is actually really popular. And I think I agree with uh, the explanation that um, the GNOME team gave, which is Dash to Doc's popularity doesn't necessarily mean that we should ship that extension by default, but rather it shows us that users would like the doc to be visible at all times. Uh, so maybe uh, the idea was to have an option for that. That didn't happen as far as I know, but uh, in Ubuntu as an example, which is uh, who actually revealed the results, that does happen out of the box. So it does make sense. This is still a survey. So let's actually go with something uh, different, which GNOME just did, uh, very recent, this one. And this is GNOME Info Collect. And how this works is it's not more a survey, uh, which also probably takes more time compared to this GNOME Info Collect. And it's actually a program that you install and you launch. And this program takes all of the interesting data in your system. Uh, of course, nothing that could actually expose you, not your personal data, but like the version of the system. There's a whole list in here, this kind of stuff. 
whether we have a Flatpak installed as an example, that's very useful. I would like to know that when you, they end up with this one. And um, so you install it, you download it, you actually see what data will be sent and you give uh, an okay and it will be sent. And um, of course they have entire section about data privacy and they express that um, a salt attach of the machine ID and username used. So they, uh, as far as I understood it, won't have your username at all. And the data will be anonymized uh, when it gets to the server. So very interesting, uh, uh, this is another approach. And of course, uh, a bit of a flow on this one is that it's slightly weirder compared to the other option. I mean, if you do a survey, you know what you're getting into. In this case, you have to download a program sometimes manually if it's not packaged and run it. That's an interesting approach for sure, but maybe for the users it's slightly weirder and it might provide with even more biased results because maybe not everybody is really willing to go ahead and install a program and run it um, in their day, uh, whereas a survey maybe is more likely for a user to have that. But surely this actually allows to grab some info that wouldn't be able to grab with a survey. Now let's actually get to KDE Plasma or KDE in general. And I think my personal opinion that KDE does have the most advanced system uh, compared to all other desktops, which is K-User Feedback. Now, by the way, I saw some users uh, saying some very wrong stuff about K-User Feedback, such as, I'll go quickly through them, that it collects data when it's uh, turned off, and that's simply false. I can do another video about that, but or the fact that it's mandatory for uh, to use KDE Plasma, which is false, or I don't know that it should be it shouldn't be even installed because an update might actually turn it on uh, under the hood without you noticing, and that's also impossible. So I, I could talk about that later, but uh, those kind of privacy issues are not actually there. And uh, <laughs> let's actually talk about the interesting part of k-user feedback rather than the false myths around it. And so uh, this is very similar uh, to Gnome Info Collect with some major differences. The first one is that it's usually, usually installed by default when you actually get your uh, Plasma uh, desktop, but it's turned off. So it doesn't collect nor send any data by default. and as I said, an update could not turn it on. That, that's not how KD works. So what you can do, and it's very simple, you open up settings and you have here, send user feedback, you push it up to the max, you apply, and you can actually see all of the data that will be sent and you can actually customize how much of the data you would like to be sent. Again, always in this list. So this means that compared to before, you don't have to install a third party program to actually have, uh, to actually be able to send your um, uh, system data. And you can actually uh, decide how much of your data you want to send. So this also, and this is another very pro, whereas Gnome Info Collect only works one time, the key user feedback, uh, as, as far as I understood it, again, uh, is actually over time. So you do it one time and you know that it's gone. You can turn it off later if you want. Nothing keeps you from having it enabled, but if it's enabled over time, it should uh, keep on sending KDE the system data. And this actually allows us to have some interesting information such as uh, actually checking whether people are updating to the latest version of uh, KDE Plasma or Kate. Because another very cool thing is that this one does not uh, stop to, as it says again in the pop-up, to, yes, this is no data, but if I do like this, this doesn't stop to actually KD Plasma, but it can also be implemented by third part, third, first party KD applications. So uh, as an example, Kate, uh, if you have Kate installed, Kate does support K user feedback meaning that the Kate developer can actually do a graph and they have done it in the past and published them about um, whether people are updating to the listed version of Kate, which is pretty cool and useful. Now, it's uh, it does have some issues such as the most important things that we would like to know about that we would probably ask in a survey 
are not available here for reasons such as I don't know whether you're using I think single click versus double click is not included and that's something we're very interested in so that's a bit of a pity. Also it's very interesting that in theory Kaiser Feedback does support surveys as well I've never actually seen that used but again there's also uh, frequently asked questions uh, why does the tele telemetry data contain no unique user machine ID and so again this doesn't send over your username or anything it is everything is anonymized so it is as privacy respecting as all of the other instruments i think that in this case kd plasma does have the most advanced tool to actually get data but sometimes i would like to see some service as well from kd plasma because uh, not everything can be grabbed by k user feedback however uh, Sadly, we still have some bias in who actually enables this k-user feedback because if you do enable k-user feedback, again, it's more likely for you to be somebody who customizes their systems. Um, so there's still a bit of bias, but it's still a very interesting data. So to recap, I, I think it's clear that uh, yes, you can design a desktop without knowing anything about us your users but you do want, if you want to make a better and better product, have some ideas on what version your user is using as an example. That's something that's useful to know. And how they use uh, your computer, what settings do they have enabled. Uh, um, of course, we can't have such telemetry by default out of the box because that's very against privacy um, focus, how Kitty, Gnome, everybody is. But via surveys or programs to install that send you data or an API which can be actually used by all KD programs and that can be turned on, obtained by the users, we're actually able to gather something of the users that will actually help us make KD Plasma, GNOME, Elementary, whatever better. So I think that's interesting. Do you have any better ways to approach this? I think that uh, a discussion about this could be useful. Oh, by the way, today an episode of the Linux Daily podcast, the first episode was published and it talks about, as an example, the fact that KDE now has half of a desktop environment inside of it. So you can check it out on a lot of platforms going from Spotify to uh, Apple Music. So also link in the description if you're interested, description, whatever.